There are so many conveniences that we take for granted on a daily basis. We can flip a switch and we can get power on demand. We turn on our faucet and we get clean drinking water. We flush our toilets and we have waste removed. But as our modern society becomes more digital, we take for granted having access to information at our fingertips. For some, the assumption is that the vast array of information we've gotten so used to can be referenced at any time. But what happens if the grid were to go down and our access to the internet gets cut off, especially for a prolonged period of time? How will we access vital information? What if I were to tell you that there's a way to download a large amount of useful information now? And here's a kicker. It's easy to do, and more importantly, it's completely free. If you're new to this channel, my name is Chris, and on this channel we discuss emergency preparedness, aka prepping. In this video, I'm gonna show you a way that you can download valuable information for free that can be viewed on your PC, your Mac, your cell phone, whether that's iPhone or Android, and even an iPad. And here's the point of the video. Everything you can download now can be viewed offline if there is no internet. You're gonna have a full backup copy of valuable information. You can fit all this information on something as small as this micro SD card that's barely the size of my thumbnail. Now, before we jump in, the question will come up. Well, how will you power your devices if the grid were to go down? I'll talk about that more at the end of the video. So what information am I discussing? Most of you are probably familiar with Wikipedia. Essentially, it's an online encyclopedia that's community driven and it's free to access. You may have researched a certain subject and this website will typically come up first in your search results. You can actually download the entirety of it for free and use a tool to view all that information offline. If the internet were to go down, you will have all of it already backed up and easily accessible. I'm also gonna show you other valuable resources that you can download in addition to Wikipedia, such as books, how-to guides, fix-it guides, and so much more. Now, before we jump into the details, let me give you just a quick high-level overview of what we're about to discuss. I'm purposefully gonna make this video as non-technical as possible. There are three things that we're gonna cover in this video. We're gonna discuss downloading files. In this case, we're gonna look at downloading Wikipedia and other valuable resources you may want. And again, this is all for free. And secondly, we're gonna talk about storage. This is where we'll download the files to. This can be your computer, maybe your phone, something like a, you know, a, a USB thumb drive or even this uh, small little one here, or, you know, something as small as a micro SD card. And again, this micro SD card, uh, this is 256 gigabytes, which is pretty substantial, and it only costs $18. But you don't need micro SD cards, you don't need thumb drives. Everything that I'm about to show you and explain to you, it can actually be done on your computer and you don't have to buy any of these additional items. And the third thing that we'll cover is a software that allows you to read the files that we're gonna download. It's very easy to install and it's free. So what I'll do now is I'll show you the process of downloading the files and then we'll look at how we view that information from a reader that will download. I'll start you off with a PC and then I'll show you how to do this on a phone. I'll provide links to everything in the description and comment section. So just follow along with the video and you can go back and click on those links later. Additionally, if you do have something like a Mac, the process is the same, which I'll mention here in just a moment. So let's go over to my PC and I'll walk you through this. So now I'm over here on my PC. What I'm gonna do is show you how to download the files We'll look at installing the app and then we'll connect the app to the files that we just downloaded. So to begin with, the software that we're using is called Kiwix and you don't have to pay attention to that for now. I just wanted to bring that point up. But what we wanna do is focus on this right here, this directory. And again, I'll post a link to this directory. What you'll find in here is a lot of folders with a lot of different files that you may be interested in. Uh, for example, there's a folder called iFixit. If you were to Google iFixit, what you'll do is come across this website that shows you how to repair pretty much everything, electronics, household items, uh, you name it. The next one is something like uh, WikiHow. If we come down here to WikiHow, very similar concept. There's a lot of how-to information uh, resources that you can download. There's things like WikiBooks. These are free public uh, books that are in the public domain that you can actually download and read for free. And then there's things like Wiki University. A lot of useful information in here. So if you can, as you can see very quickly, you've got a ton of resources at your fingertips. It's really up to you how much and what you want to download. What we're going to focus on here is Wikipedia. So if you look at this folder right here, this is Wikipedia. When you go in, you're going to see a lot of files, a lot of links that you can download. And let me tell you really quickly what this is. You'll see the first name, Wikipedia, which is the directory we're in. The next set of letters, AS in this case, AST, ATJ, these are different languages. 
what we're looking for, at least my audience mostly, is EN, which is English. So if you scroll down, you're going to see EN. Now the next set of characters, baseball, chemistry, climate change, these are all different subjects that are broken down. If you want to just grab a certain subject, you can. But what we're interested in is the uh, all section. Now the next one that we're looking for is, again, all. So we've scrolled down to here. And the next uh, set of values is maxi, mini, and no pick. I'm just going to highlight these six for you. Uh, what this does is the maxi, mini, and no pick. Maxi is maximum. Mini is the minimum. And then no pick has everything that the maximum file has, but without pictures. So as you can see, the file size is a little uh, smaller. Minimum is just less information with no pictures. So it's a very reduced and smaller file size. So as you can see, these files are pretty large. The maximum is 94, the minimum is 13, and the no pick is 50. What I would say I'm honing in on for this video is right here. This one is done in May of this year. It was uploaded, they took Wikipedia, they compress it, and they upload it in May of this year. If you come back in the future and you watch this video, this date will probably have changed significantly depending on when you come. So this is a file that we're looking for. It has everything that Wikipedia had in it as of last month. So what I can do is I can either click on it and it'll start the download process to my computer, or I can right click and go to save link as. Now, if you're on a Mac, it's the same principle. You'll just do a right click and there's gonna be an option for save target link as. And so what I'll do is I'll save link as. And what will happen is this modal window will pop up and oh, this box here, this dialog box, and we'll come over to, I've got an external thumb drive that I plugged into my computer. It's a Samsung USB. And if I click here, I can say download it to this folder, to this file, to this thumb drive. Now, if you look here, you can see that I've already downloaded this file as of yesterday, right here. Um, it's very large, so it took about eight hours to download it. So expect once you start the process, it'll take a while. I've got a fast internet connection, but you're limited to the speed of the server. So once you define where you want to download it, it can be to your downloads folder, doesn't matter. You click save, and I'm not going to do it because I've already downloaded it yesterday. So that's it. You now download it to your computer. So what I'll do now is I'll hop over to the explaining how to install the reader to access that information. Okay, so now that you're downloading the files or you've already downloaded them, what we're gonna need to do now is go over to the App Store for Microsoft, I'm on a PC. Now if you're on a Mac, it's the same principle, you'll just go into the App Store for the Mac. What you'll do is you'll then go into the App Store, and by the way, if you're like, well, how do I get to the App Store? You can click on the Start button and just scroll down to Microsoft uh, Store. Or if you wanna go down to the search bar here, same thing, you can just type in Microsoft Store, and this is the first one that shows up. Okay, so I've already got it loaded here on my screen. Now, as you can see here, what I'll do is I'll type in Kiwix. This is the name of the software. The particular one that we're interested in is Kiwix JS. So you'll see it right here in the search results. I'll go ahead and click on it, and there it is. It's right, uh, ready, available to download. So I'll go ahead and hit install. And this can take a second or two, I think right around five to 10 seconds. And once it installs, what we'll do is we'll configure it to connect to the actual file that we're downloading to our thumb drive or to our computer. So now that the software is installed, we'll go ahead and click open. And immediately this app will load up. Now what we're interested in is this tool icon right here. If you click on settings, you're gonna see that it will allow you to define and pull that file that we downloaded. So again, remember we're downloading the file. Now we just need to go and grab the file and import it into the software. Well, how do we do that? We click on select storage and then we go to select file. Okay, so this dialog box pops up and what you're gonna do is you're gonna navigate over to where you just downloaded your files. Uh, in my case, I downloaded it to this uh, small thumb drive and I've got this right here on my screen. And so, as you can see, I've got a maxi and a mini. I, the mini is just, again, a compressed version, but what we're interested in is the maximum. This is the one that we uh, are downloading that has all the information. So I'll go ahead and click on it and voila, there is Wikipedia fully downloaded on my computer. If I click around on any of the links, it's got images, uh, everything is in here. The most newest version of Wikipedia as of, uh, I believe, May of this year when I, uh, what we saw in the uh, directory structure. So that's it. If I were to turn my internet off, it doesn't matter. I can still access all of these files. So I would encourage you to click around, just get familiar with it, how it's set up and it's structured. And again, it's the same process if you're on a Mac. You just go into the Mac App Store, load up Kiwix, download the files to your computer, and then select where the folder is, where the files are at, click on it, and then you'll pull it right in. I'll show you really quickly how to do this on your phone.
Just simply come over to the App Store, load this up, and then we'll go to the search bar here and we'll type in Kiwix. All right, here is the app right here. I and mean, we'll go ahead and click on the download button. So now we have it downloaded, we'll go ahead and click open. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab the files. So you can either download files to your phone or to your thumb drive and then connect your thumb drive to your computer or micro SD card, however you wanna do it. Again, you can download the files. So I've already downloaded a file uh, from the website for Ray Charles. It's just a very small file talking about the life of Ray Charles and it allows you to quickly test this to see if it's working. And we'll go ahead and click open here. And what you'll see is it now loads this up here at the top. And when we click on it, you're gonna see all the information is offline. Essentially, it's downloaded this whole set of information just like you would do with Wikipedia. They have this on the server to allow you to do these quick tests because it's such a small file. You'll take the same approach. You will download the Wikipedia, uh, the maxi file or whatever the size file you want. And then you just simply pull it into the app and there you have it. So how would you access all the information if the grid were to go down? I've done a lot of videos on solar generators and I'll link to a playlist where I go through and explain all the different options. I recently did a comparison video showing all the different options on the market. So that might be a great starting point. Also, there's gas generators, internal combustion engine, propane, diesel. All these will allow you to power devices. Now, the most affordable option is to get something like a small solar panel. You can get these for around 50 or $60 that you can plug into your cell phone and it will power it. So you already, if you have a cell phone, all you need is that small solar panel. And again, I'll link to an option down below. Now, it might be a good idea if you have an old phone that you're not using. A lot of times we upgrade phones. And if you were to clear it off the memory and download the software that we talked about, and again, I'll put links to it below, you could actually load all that information up here and then put it in something like an EMP uh, proof bag. If there were some type of an event that uh, damages electronics, you would have this already backed up. Uh, also, if you have all this information stored on the thumb drives, you could use some type of reader or a lot of phones have a micro SD slot where you can slide this in on the side. So there's a lot of options for you to have this backed up in a secure location. Now I'll tell you up front, I barely scratched the surface on this particular software. I'm not sponsored by them, but it's a very advanced software that can allow you to do a lot of things. And there's a lot of resources online that you can pull down for free. But remember, you just need to download the files you want. You install the reader on whatever device you are going to be using and you're set. Again, I'll post links to everything that we cover below. If there's anything you feel that I missed, feel free to post the feedback that you have in the comments section below. As always, stay safe out there.